I just can't handle it. I think it's a lot of I'll just leave my hand up. I can't remember if you said it. Hey, did you want all answers to scientific notation? No, just the first one. Oh, I was just telling you. Like, he was so making so ones that like, didn't even make sense to do scientific notation. Is it all right? One point four three. If you did, that's fine. Okay. You don't have it. Okay, so let me kind of give you some. Does anybody have any specific questions? Ten. Oh. Well, just give me a ballpark. Yes. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Ballpark. wait, no, don't say the ballpark yet. I know. Are you supposed to? I didn't do it. I just like plug numbers in until I got it. Oh yeah, number ten. But before you start doing it, what is the whereabouts of the answer? Okay. Just hold on. That's what I. So the total wait, length no. of the one seventy-five. So here's. Huh? It's, I got two answers, but it could be. No. No, like, obviously there's one answer, but I think one of them is. So, here's the setup. So, George's mass is what, 56? Yeah. So, you have 56 kilograms times G is going to get you this force. And Joe's is what, 43? Yeah. Okay, so 43 kilograms times G, right? So, clearly, where's the fulcrum going to be? Closer to George, closer to Joe. Closer to George. So let's say you just make a guess. Let's say I'm going to put in uh, 0.25 meters. Okay? Just take a guess. You can, this will work. So I take the force of George times 0.25, right? But then what would the distance for Joe be? So the total length is 1.75. And this is 0.25, her distance then would be 1.25. So you could try that, okay? And then you can just randomly kind of guess until you kind of get where those two forces are the same. You can do that. It's valid. It's going to take a long time. But you can do that. But here's the bigger truth, is that whatever the distance is for George, the distance to Joe is going to be the total length minus whatever you have for George, okay? Or if you want to let this be X for Joe, then it's going to be 1.75 minus this for George. I don't care. You can get the same answer either way. So here's the basic idea. You got 56 kilograms times G times some distance for George, right? That's going to be his torque. That has to equal 43 kilograms, 43, kilograms times G times 1.75 minus X. At this point, it's an algebra problem. Distribute this, get all your X terms on one side, get all the others on the other, but here's what you have to watch. If you do it this way, when you find X, what are you finding? The distance to George. George. The question asks for the distance to yeah. Joe. Which is a pretty simple fix. So your answer should be around one meter. Okay? Okay. Now, on number six. That answer should be faster than the speed of sound by quite a bit. Okay, linear velocity of a person standing on the equator. What's the speed? That's on top. 333 meters per second. Okay, okay. that's right. It's going to be on what? Quite a bit <laughs> faster. Um, like maybe like four hundred six. Is seventeen a really big number? Where did you get six? Define really big. Well, like four digits. Oh, God, no. Okay, well, <laughs> over 100. <laughs> Roughly. Uh, your answer to number 17 and number 18 are in the hundreds. But, okay. Less than 151. Oh. Uh, on number 19. This is a big ish, but if you add up all of your answers, you should get around 40. If you numerically add up all of your answers to number 19, 
If they're all wow. right, when you add them together, you're going to get about 40. Yep. Or what? You voted. I like it. I did vote. Did you vote this morning? <laughs> I actually voted on Saturday. Uh, but you're wearing your sticker today. What did yeah. you want to do? Did you say the same thing? I did. I did. <laughs> I voted early. I voted, oh, it said twice. Uh, on number 20, there's a couple of different ways you can work number 20. Exactly. Uh, one option is that you use V equals R omega, and you find the, ang the final angular velocity in radians per second, and then you switch that, and then find your acceleration. The other option is that you find your linear acceleration, and then you use that to find your angular acceleration. I don't care. Okay? But either way, your answer to number 20 should be around 20. Cool. I'd like to say I was clever and planned it that way, but I really can't. But you did. Yes. Yeah. Right, Brooklyn? Right. Okay. See, was that so bad? Yeah. Didn't even cost you any money? Nope. Nope. Sure didn't. <laughs> we'll get to that question later. Okay. Anything else? Once, twice, sold. Get them high. So, if. At some point in my life, if I ever retire, and the, the, the school called me and said, "Hey, you know, you, you're going to come back and you get a, and you're going to give one lecture out of all the lectures that I give." Oh boy, this would be the one. Okay, mainly because so many kind of random things are at the end are going to come into one large cohesive idea. Hopefully, so today's lesson is brought to you by the concept of moment of. Inertia. So, when you look at moment of inertia, okay. So, the simple definition is that it's a major. That was the noise she was making. <laughs> oh, I think it's like over and over and over. Okay. So here's the setup. When you talk about moment of inertia, and it's related to inertia, but it's not the same thing. So, moment of inertia is basically a resistance to a change in angular velocity. So this is a linear velocity. So basically, it's how resistant something is to either speeding up or slowing down. So just like if something has a large inertia, it's hard to get it to speed up, but once you get it moving, it's hard to stop. So the same thing is true of something with moment of inertia. Mm. So if something has a large moment of inertia, it's harder to get it to get going. But once you get it going and spinning, then it's hard to stop it. Okay? So on the back side of the lecture notes that I gave you yesterday, there's a whole bunch of equations that list the formulas for moment of inertia. These are also on your big dog equation sheet, okay, on the back side. So don't memorize them because there's a whole bunch of different versions of this depending upon the shape of the object. But the general idea, the overarching idea of moment of inertia, and the, like I said, there's a whole bunch of variations on this, but the general idea is that it's mr squared. So m is going to be the mass. <laughs> R is going to be where that mass is located. So you can only use this MR squared under two very specific conditions. If I tell you that it's a point mass, in other words, like for example, the Earth moving around the sun, 
The Earth is a point mass moving around the sun. It has a certain moment of inertia. Or if I tell you it's a thin hoop, okay? So if you look at that, that equation, the very first one up there at the top says thin hoop, I equals mr squared. If it's anything else, I will tell you it's a solid sphere, it's a hollow sphere, it's whatever it is. So when you go through, you, typically about Calc 3, that's when you usually drive those equations and you see where all of those come from. So don't memorize them. I will give you any moment of inertia that you need. Don't sweat it. Okay? Now, so let's start to look at how this plays out. So here I've got an aluminum rod with a couple of brass weights on them. Okay? And I want to balance this thing on, in the palm of my hand. So I have two options. I can either try and balance it like this with the weights at the bottom, or I can try and balance it like this with the weights at the top. Which one's going to be easier to balance? Weights at the bottom, weights at the top. So how many vote weights at the bottom? Okay? No, I'm thinking. How many vote weights at the top? One, two. Okay? How? Come up here. Okay. So hold your hand out flat like this. Okay? So you can take that hand and get it studied and try and balance it. I'm not setting you up to fail. If I was setting you up to fail, I would be much more creative. It's not going to work. Here, put a trap right there. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> okay? Now, flip it over. This is going to be so much. So I'm about to say. You can move your hand to try and <laughs> <laughs> Which one's easier? Um, the bottom one. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go to these places. Kendra, come here. Okay, are you really going to make me do this? Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> 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 Give it to me. All right. Okay. Where's the trapdoor when you need it? <laughs> 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 it's me. If you say, that makes it even better. Give it to me. If they were like flat at the bottom. But they're not. Now, flip it over. Okay. This is so much harder. Really? Oh, never mind. No, no that, that's not. That's a little bit easier. It's a little bit. <laughs> you don't need your comments. That's wild. Wow. That's kind of wow. easy, guys. It's the top. It's the top. Okay. So <laughs> we need. Well, we need a third party. Let's look. Um, definitely. I think I accidentally voted. All right. Look. Uh, <coughs> athletic. Wow. Right there. Okay. <laughs> so now, can you do that on your like like your nose like a C? Okay. No. <laughs> Much harder to do. Now, here's the reason why. Look at this equation. Moment of inertia. <laughs> Does the mass change? No. Mass is the same. So by having them up at the top, what's happened to the radius? Oh. It's gotten bigger. It's gotten bigger. So therefore, the moment of inertia is big, bigger. So with that bigger moment of inertia, you have a bigger resistance to a change in angular velocity. Because if you want to try and balance it, okay, what do you want your moment, what do you want your angular velocity to be at the top? Zero. You want it to remain at zero. You don't want this thing accelerating. So by having that mass up there at the top, okay, then I've got a bigger moment of inertia, so it's hard, so it's more resistance to change in that value. If I got it at the bottom, I have a smaller moment of inertia, and it changes very quickly. Okay? Got that. Now, Garfield, come up here. 
Not everyone wants. Round of applause for Garfield. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Sorry. Put your hold like this. Hold like this. And go back and forth like you're fishing. Like you're fishing. All right. And then do the same thing like that. Okay? I feel like need Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, He's been fishing before. More arms. <laughs> Huge. Yeah. There's a difference. What's the, the difference? Inertia. What about it? <laughs> this one's easier. And this one's harder. Okay, so it's harder to get it going, right? But once you get it going, it's still pretty hard. Difficult to stop. Oh yeah. It is. yeah. Okay. All right. Got that. So, let's go to the back of the room. So here's the setup. Initially, we're going to have two rings of exact same diameter. They're the exact same thickness. And they're the machine to have the exact same mass. Okay? So everything's the same. Diameter, everything. The only difference is the distribution of the mass. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put them up here like this. Kendra, you have to play center field. Okay. Okay? And I'm going to let go of them. I'm going to let them roll down the hill. So, when I let go of them, okay, we've got this action going. Does it undergo angular acceleration? Yes. Yes, because what's the initial angular velocity? Zero. Zero. So, it speeds up. So, what you have to apply to make that disc speed up? A force. A force at a? Incline. Well, no, no, no. At a certain, rhymes with 80s. Radius. A certain radius, right? Otherwise known as? <coughs> rhymes with orc. Torque. 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 Okay. Torque. No. Okay. I love Okay. I love Okay. So, we have to apply a certain amount of torque. Just like if you look at what Kendra's doing, Okay? If she's going to make it spin, she has to apply a torque to it. Otherwise, it remains at rest. So here's my question. What's supplying the torque to make that thing roll down the hill? There's two things. Gravity is one of them. But is it gravity or a component of gravity? Force parallel. Force parallel. Okay, so force parallel is making it move down the hill. Something else. What if this was the magic frictionless puck, and this was the magic frictionless inclined plane? It would just sort of slide, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would just go down there like this because there would be no tangential force to make it rotate. So you have two things. You have force parallel, which is making it go down the hill, and then you have a tangential force friction working in the opposite direction, which is making it spin. So you have two things going, force parallel, Force friction. Now, even though these materials are a little bit different, we're going to assume that the, the coefficient of friction between them is basically going to be the same. So everything is the same, except for the distribution of mass. So I've got same diameter, same mass, same force parallel, same friction, the whole thing. So here's the question. There's three things that could happen when I let go of this. The solid disk makes it down first. The hollow ring makes it down first, or it's a tie, because mm. everything is the same. So those are your three options. Solid disk, Lord of the Rings, or it's a tie. Well, there's no ties here, so it's one of the radius. What do you mean there's no ties? What do you mean if you drop a feather and pull a ball? Not a tie. Not a tie. Not a tie. Not a tie. Yes. So how many vote solid disk? Oh, okay. Right. We have to have at least one person vote. You're gonna, you're gonna be the sacrificial lamb. Yeah, okay. Hollow ring. I have my true ball with you guys. One, two, I'm three, going with that. I'm going to the four, five, six. So we're up to two on the solid disc. Yeah. I'm okay. Go with the solid disc. So the rest of you. Tie? I'm staying You're staying out of this. Okay. <laughs> on the day we vote, <laughs> you don't. This is it. This is our country. This is our country. This is kind of going to be like the balloon. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I don't see how it's going to work. 
Wrong. Yeah. No. Wrong. No. Okay. Wrong. All right. Wrong. 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 Okay. So, Kendra, are you ready? Wrong. Wrong. All right, come on, solid disc. Okay. Ready? Come on, solid disc. Three, two, one. Solid disc! Yeah! All the solid disc! Let's go! Okay? No, let, let's yeah. look around just to make sure that it wasn't just like a different side of the track. Because the inertia is small and it can be faster. Shh! Your is big and Lord of the Rings. Okay. Right? Uh, I told you there's no ties. How's it give a loose ties? So, <laughs> don't get caught. Now, here's the deal. It's MR squared. Why? Because the inertia is bigger on that one. Yeah. Not the inertia. The point. The moment of the inertia. The moment of inertia. Yes. Yes. Thank you, boys. Right? Because here's the deal. So basically, imagine that we have an aluminum rod with those brass weights. So this is like having a continuous set of those rods with those weights around on the outside. So with those all that weight on the outside, then it's hard to get it to spin. This has an even distribution of mass. So like on average, this mass is located about halfway up because it's an even distribution of the mass. So this one has, they both have the same mass. So on average, this radius is much bigger than this one is. Therefore, it has a bigger moment of inertia, therefore it's harder to get, to get going. Now, but if I push them both at the same speed, which one would roll a greater distance? The uh, Lord of the Rings. Rings. Lord of the Rings, because once you've got it going, it's going to go, it's gonna go and, and wouldn't stop as easily. Okay? All right. So here I have two, both of them have ball bearings inside. Ready, Kinder? Mm -hmm. Yes! Hold on. You got rolled off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, before we open them up, that one, that one made it down first. All right. Yes, so sir. where are the ball bearings going to be located on that one? Towards middle, the or towards the center, or towards the outside? Center or outside? Center. 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 So these should be on the outside. So let's open them up. And if you're lying. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh well, I'm sorry. Oh. I got it. Oh. So those were closer to the inside. The moment of inertia was smaller. smaller therefore, it accelerated faster. Faster. Okay. So we have one left. Okay. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. That's Whoa. Such a test There's a string attached to that wall, and you're tugging it with your feet. <laughs> <laughs> It's magnets. It's magnets? I don't know. No, it's not magnets. It's <laughs> simple physics. No. No. Yeah. 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 One of them is at the top. Yeah, they're unevenly distributed there, right? Maybe they're at the end. Either that or right. There's some drinking. in the middle, some in the middle. Yeah, they've been drinking. They've been drinking way off center on this one. So yeah, this one I've just got all of them concentrated on. Uh, on side. Yeah. So oh. the center of mass was further up. That's the direction that it rolled. Okay, got it? Good? Yes. Okay. So, Hunter. What? what? <laughs> They're picking on me. Oh, well, no, they're picking on me. <laughs> no, we're not killing <laughs> one. They were. Okay, no politics. This is all about physics. Okay. There are some nope. physics in. Nope, there's not. Trust me, not in this election. True. All right. So we have the Lord of the Rings, and then we have the hockey puck. Okay? So which one underwent the largest acceleration? The hockey puck or the Lord of the Rings? The hockey puck. Hockey puck. Uh, hockey puck. So this one had 
Nope. A bigger fish, right? A larger angular acceleration. Yeah. This one had a small fish. Small fish. Smaller fish. Which one had the bigger moment of inertia? Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. So this one has a big eye. This one has a little eye. Small eye. So here's how you remember this: is that. Small fish have large eyes. Oh, you should have used the E as the. That would have been cool. Can you change it, please? <laughs> so, this is the fish, right? Big fish have. Now, the converse of this, if you're a small fish, you have large eyes. So then with this fish over here. Isn't that what you just said? No, no. So this if they're a bit small said. fish have large eyes. This one is small fish have, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got what I started with. Okay? I was like, oh, I was like, <laughs> yeah. My bad. So, small fish have large eyes, or the converse is large fish have small, small eyes. Or you can get, they're just inverses of each other. Big moment of inertia, small acceleration. Yeah, if you wanted to go that way. If you don't want to have any fun. But yeah, you want to, that's what works too. Okay. So, but here's the main point, is that they're inversely related. Now, this is, but there's one caveat that goes with it. This is with the idea that the same amount of torque is applied. So if the same amount of torque is applied, they're going to, you're going to have an inverse relationship between these variables. One goes up, the other one goes down. Got this. Now, here's how you actually do the math. So if you are given And again, I would have to specifically tell you, hey, this is how you treat this object. So if you look at this one, with the, with the Lord of the Rings, you have an R1 and you have an R2. So that moment of inertia is one half mass R1 squared plus R2 squared. So in this case, and you don't, don't worry about writing this down. I'm just showing you how to do it. Now, what units am I going to get out of this? Meters. Meters. Oh, meters squared. And? Is that a second? Yeah, so this mass oh, is in kilograms. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay? So mass in kilograms, and you got a radius squared, so any moment of inertia is always going to be in kilograms meters squared. Doesn't make any difference. So like in this one, this works out to be 3.4 times 10 to the minus third kilogram meter squared. Now, here's the problem with moment of inertia, is that it's hard to like intuitively get a feel, hey, does this seem reasonable? So when you look at like the Earth, the Earth has a moment of inertia because it's a, it's a spinning sphere, okay? It has a moment of inertia. A bowling ball has a moment of inertia. But it isn't like you can feel it and go, oh yeah, this is going to have a moment of inertia of like, oh, two. Okay? So the bad thing about moment of inertia is that it's hard to say, does this seem reasonable? But here's, but if you look at this, go, okay, hey, it's a thin hoop, didn't have a lot of mass, we didn't have a really big radius, it's not going to have a lot of moment of inertia. Okay? So it seems reasonable that this is small. Now, if you look at the one from the hockey puck, okay, if you look at that one, with that one you're going to use one half mr squared. Now, here's the reason, basically the short version of where this one half comes from. On average, that mass is located halfway between the center and the outside edge. If it was just a thin hoop, 
we'd use mr squared because all of that mass is located around here. So with this one, on average, what we're saying is that this is where this mass is located. So if you plug in these numbers, 0.65, or 1 half, times 0.65 kilograms times the radius of 0 0.075, Meter squared, you get okay. So here's the deal. So if you look at this calculated moment of inertia, you get 1.8 times 10 to the minus the third kilograms meter squared. You get this one, 3.4 times 10 to the negative third kilogram meter squared. So this one's going to have a smaller moment of inertia than the ring does. So therefore, when you apply the same torque, this has a smaller moment of inertia, it underwent a greater angular acceleration. Okay? Good with that. Okay. Now we need to do a little bit of mathematical voodoo. Just a little bit. This is your favorite lecture. Just it was tuned out. Chill out. We're not done. I still got a long way to go. So, we know that torque equals force times radius, right? Yep. Okay. Now, we also know that F equals... What? No. <laughs> MA, right? Yeah. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> when you have objects that spin, okay? When you have objects that spin, and you'll see why this works, I'm just going to tell you this for the first time, I'll repeat it again and again and again. You cannot use F equals MA for objects that spin, and here's the reason why. Is that if I apply this force right here close to the center, versus applying that same force out on the edge, I get completely different accelerations, okay? So if something is spinning, do not use F equals MA, okay? Don't do it any way, shape, or form. The only time you can use F equals MA with this wheel is if I'm just gonna throw it like this, okay? Won't work if I'm trying to make the wheel spin. Okay? So, do not, do not, do not use F equals MA in this situation. Damn it! Take those earphones out of your ear. Whatever you're listening to, put up there. Now, I am going to do this. If F equals MA, can I put MA in here? Where at? Yes. For the F. Or just substituted no. in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so torque equals <laughs> Mar. Mar, right? Ah. Mar. The A is bad, okay? Because the wheel isn't going to accelerate linearly, it's going to accelerate in, a, in oh angular motion. But what's the crossover equation that relates A and alpha? A equals R alpha. Okay. So can I substitute that in here? Since A equals R alpha. Oh, my. So I can go M. R fish. R fish. R fish times R. Right? And fish R squared. So I've got M R squared. Fish. But mr squared is. Um, oh my gosh. Oh gosh. So torque oh. also equals. Oh. oh. I fish. Oh. I fish. Okay. So really. Don't say so. We can. We calculated <laughs> the torque over there. We looked at the torque. Yes. We looked at the torque. Good. Wow. Now, so here's what we've got. I've got torque equaling two things. Force times radius, and it also equals? I fish. I fish. I fish. Now, if this is true, what has to happen to the units on both sides? They're equal. Equal. They have to be the same. 
So any moment of inertia is measured in what units? Kilograms, meters squared. Kilograms, meters squared. Alpha is going to be measured in? Radians per second, per second squared. Radians per second squared. Right? But the radians are dimensionless numbers, so those don't even matter. Yeah, let's flip out. So basically, I get kilograms per second squared. What? It's, it's fine. Okay? They're dimensionless numbers. Okay? Okay. okay. Now, over here, I have force times radians. Force measured in? Kilogram meters per second squared. Newton meters. The other way to express Newtons is? Kilograms meters per second squared. Kilograms meters per times the meters. meters. Which gets me? Kilograms meters squared over? Which gets you I fish. Second squared, which is the exact same thing that I have over there. Wow. Well, I don't fish. You go fish. <laughs> this is why this is it's his favorite lecture. It he was. Loved now it's fish. <laughs> okay, so both of these units have to, both sides have to produce the same units, which they do with kilograms meters squared over seconds squared. If this didn't work out, the equation is, isn't valid. Okay? I have to produce the same units on both sides. Okay, so let's look at what happened with Lord of the Rings and the hockey puck. So, here's Lord of the Rings. Here's the hockey puck. So I had the same torque applied to each one, right? Torque was the same. So over here, this had a bigger... That bigger, <laughs> not a bigger eye. It had a bigger eye. Large eye. So it had a... Small fish. Small fish. fish. This one had the same torque, but it had a smaller... Fish. Eye. Smaller fish, but a bigger eye. <laughs> huh. Boom. Okay, so that's why that worked. Okay? Why did they have different eyes again? I'm sorry. Because the distribution of the mass. This one had an even distribution of the mass. This one had all the mass constants. And where is that plugged into on the thing? Huh? Where is that plugged into on the equation? If I, it's, 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 this is where it's plugged in, is the moment of inertia. So you won't make us calculate the moment of inertia? Oh, yes, I will. So this then where do you... It's a quantitative... That's what I did way back here, okay. when I actually calculated the moment of inertia. So it was the radiuses that yeah. were different. Okay. And, and the formulas themselves. <laughs> You used a different formula? Oh. Oh, because they, every, every object has a yes. different K gotcha. Now I get it. Okay. okay. Now, think this through. So I've got this wheel at rest, right? Okay? Wheel's at rest. I'm going to make it spin. In which case does it have a greater moment of inertia? When it's spinning or when it's at rest? Spinning. 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 Wait, would it be? Wait, greater inertia? Wait, is it, is it no, no, greater moment of inertia. Would, is it spinning at a constant velocity? Pretty spin. Not spinning. It's, it's not spinning. It's it's the greater not same. spinning. Is it the same? It's or is it the same? It's the same. Not spinning. It's not a factor. Okay? That would be like me trying to plug the fact that it has green handles into the moment of inertia. Okay? It's not there. What's the only thing that affects moment of inertia? Mass and fish. Mass and radius. That's the only thing that affects moment of inertia. Now, here's the question. Is it possible for two objects of unequal mass to have the same inertia? Yes. But the radius is somehow. Is it possible for two objects of unequal mass to have the same inertia? No. 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 Why? Mass is the only mass thing dependent. Mass is guys. the only thing that affects inertia. You know, you know. Is it possible for two objects of unequal mass to have the same moment of inertia? Yes. 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 Because inertia, moment of inertia is dependent upon mass radius and mass. mass. Right? It's, it's two for two, two pieces. <laughs> yes, as opposed to just a single God. Got it. Okay. Now, here's what I want to look at. So situation number one, I'm going to apply a force very close to the center. 
Situation number two, I'm going to apply that same force out on the edge. Are both situations going to create the same angular acceleration? No. 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 Why not? Okay, now here's what you have to be careful of. So when you look at the torque, right? So here's this wheel. Here's the hub. Situation number one, I apply that force very close to the center. Situation number two, I apply that same force out there on the edge. Is the torque created going to be the same? No, because no. No, torque equals two things. It equals force and radius. So with this one, I have a very small radius with the same amount of force. So that's going to create a relatively big or small torque. I'm going to apply the same force, but a small radius. So that's going to create a relatively small torque. Now, if I apply that same force out on the edge, what's going to happen to the amount of torque I'm going to create? It's going to increase. So if I apply the same force, but with a larger radius, then I create bigger torque. Good with this. Now, that torque also equals what? I fish. I fish. So in both situations, am I going to have the same value of I? Is it the same wheel in both situations? Yeah. Yeah. Is the mass the same? Yeah. Is the radius the same? Yeah. No. Yeah. This is the radius of the wheel, not yeah. the radius of where I'm applying the oh force. They have the same. It's the same eye, right? Okay. So in this, case, this situation, I'm keeping the eye the same. So I'm going to have the same eye on both of them. But since this is a smaller torque, this is going to have a small fish. fish. This one's going to have a bigger torque, so I'm going to have a bigger fish. Bigger fish. Oh, gosh. Okay? So in this situation, you have to look at what I'm holding constant. I'm holding the eye is constant. I'm holding the force constant. So as the radius gets bigger, with the same force, you create a larger angular acceleration. Now, for those of you that have ridden bicycles, so here's your 10-speed bike, right? Got the wheels, boom, like this. Whoa. <laughs> you know what I mean. A little too aggressive. Okay? Wow. So, what's the purpose of your brakes? Stop you. So I can fly off it. Stop the wheel. Stop the spinning. To stop the wheel. So the wheels create a... Friction. To Torque. 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 <laughs> right? The wheels, the brakes create a torque. Right? And the, the purpose of the torque is to do what? Stop. Stop. To cause an angular acceleration. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So here's the deal. So you can either have the brakes really close to the hub, or you can have the brakes out here on the edge of the wheel. If you apply the same amount of braking force close to the center versus out on the edge, in which situation are you going to stop faster? Ms. Treadway. Why? Because the radius is larger. So you're going to create more torque, so therefore you will have a larger angular acceleration. Okay? That's or something. Good with this. Now, the same thing is true when you pedal, right? So, if you look at your back wheel, you have, like, let's say, for example, you have a 10 speed bike, right? So, if that chain is very close to the center and you apply a, a, a force through your pedals, you have a small radius, right? So, if the force is the same, you won't create much torque, you won't accelerate as quickly. But if that chain is out here on the outside, on the outside sprocket, then what's going to happen? You pedal the same, but you're going to create a larger torque. Yes, so you'll accelerate faster. Okay? So that's the trade off is F as you shift through the gear. Okay. So. The higher the gear, the closer. 
Brooklyn, come up here. Come on. I need someone with a good sense of balance. So, Hunter, move over there so you're not in the way of the camera. What's the blue stuff in your um, jar? It's just concrete. Okay. So, so I'm going to have Brooklyn standing on what's known as the green spinny thing. Oh. Okay. So, stand on that. It's a technical term. We spun on we spun kids on that for the Coriolis effect of meter. Okay, so hold this. Okay. Now, is it possible for Brooklyn to change her moment of inertia? Um, uh, yes. Sure. Yeah. Can you move towards the edge? Sit down. Get more mass. Sit down. Okay. So if you put your arms out and then bring them in. Okay. So has she just changed her moment of inertia? Yes. yes. In which case does she have a larger moment of inertia? With the weights in or with the weights out? The weights out. Weights out. Because therefore, she, she ha overall, she has a larger radius. radius with the same mass. mass. So depending upon how she distributes that mass, she can change her moment of inertia. Okay? Now... Just stand there for a second. Okay. <laughs> so here's the next big equation. And that's L equals I omega. So this L is angular momentum. What do you think the I is? Same thing? Moment of inertia. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Omega is what? The velocity. Radians per second is how fast you spin. So basically, L equals I button. Okay? <laughs> now, look at this. Linear momentum is mass times velocity, right? So mass is a measure of inertia. It's how easily something speeds up and slows down. Moment of inertia is how easily something speeds up or slows down spinning on an axis. This V is how fast you're moving. This is omega is how fast you're spinning. So it's the exact same form. There's no one half. There's nothing squared. It's just mass times velocity. It's I omega. Now, when she's standing there on the green spinny thing, does she have a moment of inertia? Yeah. Yes. She has mass. She has radius. But does she have any angular momentum right now? No. No. Because there's no omega. She's not spinning. So here's what I want you to do. Okay? Do you think angular momentum has to be conserved? Yes. 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 It's one of the great conservation laws. Linear momentum has to be conserved. Angular momentum has to be conserved. So here's what I want you to do. You should hold your arms like this. Take the top, your torso on up, and spin quickly to the left. To the left. That way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. All right. Yeah. Okay? The only left. I can't. There. Okay? Now, <laughs> when you do this, when you took the top half of your body went one way, what happened to the bottom half? I wanted to go in the opposite direction. Why? That's bound out. Basically. What she just did, do that again. Okay? So, now I want you to spin. I just want you to try to go back and forth, okay? So, here's the deal. When she takes and spins the top half left, the bottom has to go to the right. right. Just like when you fire a cannon, right? The cannon has to go in one direction. The cannonball has to go in the opposite, opposite direction. Can we do that again? Huh? Can you do that again? What? No, 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 we're not. No, we're good. Okay? So, here's the deal. So when you look at this, there is no way, there is absolutely no way she could take the top half of her body and spin to the right, and the bottom half would go in the same direction. Okay? Can't happen. Because otherwise that would be like shooting the cannon, and the cannon and the cannonball go in the same direction. Can't happen. So right now everything is at zero. So when she spins in one direction, the bottom half has to spin in the 
So then everything still adds up to zero. zero. Okay. Now, here's what I want you to do. No, 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 you're good. So I want you to start with your arms out. And I'm going to apply a torque, and I'm going to make you spin. Okay? Then I want you to bring your arms up over your head. Okay? All right? Can you handle it? Okay. I got all the confidence in the world. You ready? Okay. Now, bring it in. Now, back down. Okay. Whoa! That was nice. Okay? You see what I'm talking about? I know. You really did. Okay. Can you do it one more time, Brooklyn? It looks so graceful. Now, this one, I want you to just bring him in like this. Okay? You ready? So, arms out. You ready? Okay, bring him in. Now, back out. Now, back in. Okay. Oh, that's wild. <laughs> okay. Now, when you brought him in, what happens? When you put him back on you, so much more slow down. Okay. Got that. All right. Well done. All right. I need to get that explained. Does it sweat? Nice. All right. I need to get that explained to me. I will. Okay. So, for the sake of hair, I'm going to assume I'm going to pretend that you had to hair down. <laughs> when you did this, okay? So, we have two situations. Situation number one, okay? I don't want to pause it. <laughs> you can't pause it. She had her arms out like this, right? I don't like it. So, where am I supposed to go? You had a certain mass, right? And you had a certain <laughs> radius. <laughs> you didn't tell me to move back, so I was in the middle. Okay. All right. My bad. Okay. Now, and she was spinning with a certain angular velocity, right? That's going to create a certain value of angular momentum. Okay? A certain value of L. So, this, when her arm's out, is that going to be a relatively large moment of inertia or a small moment of inertia? Large, because it's going to have a large radius. So this is going to have a large I, okay, because the arms are out. It's got to be a small fish then. Okay? Fish has nothing to do with it. Okay? It's about a million. Now, L equals MRW, IW, and <laughs> That's it. No, it's just moment of inertia times a million. Okay? All we're saying here is that she had a certain mass with a large radius. Now, when she brought her arms in, Brooklyn, what happened to your moment of inertia? It got smaller because we shrank the radius. So, when you shrink this radius, what happens to your moment of inertia? It gets smaller. But, what happened to you? You sped up, and you spun faster. But what happened to the value of L? It stays the same because the angular momentum has to be conserved. So this is what happens with ice skaters, okay? Or hurricanes, okay? Same idea. Angular momentum has to be conserved. So when you bring your arms in, if you do gymnastics, if you, anything, so if you watch people that even dive when they're spinning, if they want to slow down, what do they do? Make the radius bigger. Yeah, they, they go big. So if they want to spin faster, they get into a tuck position because then they have a smaller radius and they're going to spin faster. They want to slow down, they go like this, they go slow. But no matter what, what happens to the value of L? Remains constant. Remains constant. What do they do to so, slow down like that's graceful? Huh? What, like I know that like you can just put your arms up, but like figure skaters whenever they're like trying to, you know, get their points or whatever, what do they yeah. do to slow down? They, 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 they just put their arms out. But does that look good? Yeah, and then but they, they want to go fast, they're gonna start like this. Well, yeah. and when they go to stop, they're gonna do this. Oh like Wait, the big what? finish. What would they do? So, do you have a certain what would they do for a big finish? Omega. I would really like to test this. Can it just be anything? <laughs> so, like the eye doesn't Please. restrict the omega. No, no. Okay. okay. 
Wow. Now, here's the last thing. A kilt. There's four. So. <laughs> Maddie, come up here. What? Yes. You can handle Give this. me the camera. Uh -huh. uh, it's my turn. <laughs> I'm not moving again, guys. You can't do it. Okay. Yeah, you're all right. You're, 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 we'll move this over here. Okay. okay. So, just stand on there for a second. Oh. Okay. Now, this wheel, once I make it spin, now has an angular momentum, right? As a moment of inertia, it hasn't made it spin. So, angular momentums, to figure out the direction, is called the right hand rule. So, what you do is, so like in this case, the wheel is spinning in this direction. So, you take your right hand and you curl it in the direction that it's spinning. The direction that your thumb points is the direction of the momentum vector. So if the wheel is going like this, you wrap your hand like this, the momentum vector is pointing out to the right. If you reverse it and then curl your hand this way, the momentum vector points out to the right. So if it's going this way, it's pointing to the left. If it's going this way, it's pointing to the right. So you can switch the direction of the momentum vector. So here's what we're going to do. Okay. You're going to hold this out like this, okay? And it's not going to be spinning initially, okay? All right? Got it? Okay? Now, all I want you to do is just twist it like this. Anything happen? Not much. Not much. Do you have any angular momentum right now? No. Does the wheel have any angular momentum? No. No. So right now, the total momentum of the system is zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a torque to the wheel. And I'm going to create angular no momentum. Okay? Then I want you to take that and twist it, and then twist it back the other way. Okay? Got it? Okay. Wow. Ready? So this is going to keep going fast. Okay, you ready? No. Okay, now. Now, jump the other way. Okay. Now, so like lay it over. Okay? Now, jump back the other way. Woo! Okay? Now, now, look like lay it all the way over. Whip it. Whip, whip it. it. Whip it. Whip it. Whip it. Look at this. Okay? You don't like this. Okay. Let's stop. Got it. Oh, that's okay. Eric's turn. Now. That's Eric's turn. Well, this is even good. Did it feel so? Here's the deal. Eric, we should do this. When she did this, okay? When you tilted it, what did you change? Hey, what did you change when you tilted it? The value of the angular momentum vector or the direction? direction? The direction. So by tilting it, she basically became a gyroscope, which is used for navigation in planes, spacecraft, ships, that type of thing. So when she tilted it, she changed the direction of the momentum vector. So her body then had to spin to compensate for the change in the angular momentum vector. So. The Earth has a certain angular momentum vector, which is a good thing, because if I try and balance this wheel and it's not spinning, it goes doink. Okay, right? So the Earth, if the Earth isn't spinning on its axis, the Earth would wobble a lot because of the different gravitational poles of the Sun and the Moon. But if I get it spinning, then no way. Oh, what kind of I'm so confused. Why? What? This lecture. Okay. So it's basically. You said. Dude, I thought it wouldn't. You didn't think it would what? Stay up. What did you think it was going to do? I fall thought over. It was going to fall over still. Oh, it's going to fall up. Get it for me. Okay. It's, but if you spin it the other way and put it up, will it still stay up? Well, why would that <laughs> <laughs> Because maybe the earth, the earth, okay. angle you were, oh, I've never played with the top of your head. There, now it's spinning okay, the other but way. This is different from the top. No, no it's, it's not. not. It's, literally it's just okay. a really, really, really yeah, big, big top. top. Okay? Maybe the mass will change the top. So, here's the deal. So, when I take this, right, and I spin it, you create an angular momentum vector that doesn't want to change. So, for those of you that have ridden bikes, which I'm guessing is the vast majority of you, why is it really, really hard to maintain your balance if you're going slow? Because you got no angular momentum. No, it's at least very small, right? It's a very small angular momentum vector. 
That's right. But as you go, as the wheel spins faster, what happens to the value of the angular momentum vector? It increases, right? So therefore, as that angular momentum vector gets bigger, then that wheel is more resistance to a change, and it's easier to balance going faster than it is going slower. Okay? Because wow. it has a bigger Got the idea. Got it? Good. Okay. So, so let me kind of take you through some of these problems. Uh, so remember one and two, you have a solid cylinder, and, or a solid disc, and you have a hollow cylinder. So look on that handout that I gave you that lists the specific moments of inertia. You can only use MR squared under two distinct circumstances. If it's a point mass or if it's a thin hoop. Otherwise, you have to use some variation of those equations. Pay attention to significant digits. Everything I've given you has three significant digits. No offense, but my Kim 1 students are doing better with significant digits than you guys are right now. Hey, probably not on, on, on this last assignment. I'm feeling really, really good about my sick days. Okay. Because really notoriously, they're not. Yeah, well, you said the okay. only two is win. Huh? You said much worse. A solid disc. Is that this and when it's a point mass. Like, if I take this tennis ball and swing this it around over my head, oh, it's okay. a point mass. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you get to 5 through 10, there's two, you have to remember that torque equals two things. It equals force times radius, it also equals I alpha. Okay? It equals two things. Force times radius, I alpha. You're going to use both of those on 5 through 10. So that's what? You talk so fast. It's on your equation sheet. Wait, what did you just say? Force times radius equals I and alpha. Times what? Okay. Torque equals FR. Torque equals I alpha. It's torque. I alpha equals I omega. Yes, I understand. These are the big ones. Okay? These are the big ones. Got it? Good. Okay, now, when you get to number 16 on the back. Fish is A. Okay? Yes. Yes. When you get to number 16 and 17, let me explain what's going to happen on these two problems. You have a hollow sphere spinning at 30 revolutions per minute. What do you think you're going to have to do with the revolutions per minute? You're going to have to change the seconds and get the inverse. You ultimately, you want to end up in radians per second, okay? Which means you don't even have to take the inverse of it. But you do have to change the revolutions per minute into radians per second, okay? Now, mass of the sphere is 24 grams. The radius is, 33, is 3 centimeters. Determine the angular momentum of the sphere. And I tell you, use I equals 2 thirds mR squared, okay? So that's going to get you a certain value of angular momentum. L. That has to be conserved. Now, on 17, here's what's going to happen. You're going to have a small bug land on the... the at the... <laughs> at the... Uh, equator. Let's go with that. At the equator of the spinning object. Okay, it's going to land right out there on the edge. So, the bug now becomes a point mass of mr squared. So visualize this. You've got this object that's spinning, and then this bug is going to come and land on it. So this just works like any conservation of momentum problem. You have two things. You have L with the bug plus L with the ball is going to equal the new L with the bug plus the new L of the ball, okay? Now, what's the initial angular momentum of the bug? Zero, it's not part of the system, okay? That goes out. So here's the deal. It, or the, afterwards, the bug has landed on the spinning ball. Do you think these are spinning at the same rate? Yeah. Yes. yes, just so this is like two objects that hit and move off together. 
these are going to be spinning at the same value of omega. So what can you do? Factor. No, factor no. Out. Factor out. Omega. Factor out. Omega. Oh. An omega, omega, right? So this is going to be i of the bug times omega of the bug plus i of the ball times omega of the ball. But these two omegas are going to be the same. And these two values added together have to equal that initial angular momentum. So what you want to do is factor out an omega. So basically, this is what you're searching for. Now, is your rate of spin going to be bigger or faster than it was without the ball? Or excuse me, than without the bug? Faster without the bug. Because I have to have the same angular momentum, but now I have a bug involved, right? So that means it's going to spin slower. So when you get this omega, it has to be smaller than what you started spinning with before the bug landed on it. Okay? Now, when you get to number 10, you want to find the angular momentum of the moon as it orbits the Earth. It is going to be a really, really, really big number. Wait, what's 18? On 18. It's going to be a really, really, really big number. So you want to use L equals I omega. Now, let me show you a little trick if you want to use it. Okay, if you want to use it. If you want to use it. V also equals R omega. True? So, what does this look like solved for omega? V divided by R. V divided by R. So what I can do is, a little hocus pocus here, right? So, I can come in here and say that's going to be I times V over R, right? True? True. Now, since it's a point mass, what do you use for moment of inertia? M R squared. M R squared. Mr. So I'm going to have M R squared times V over R. So then what can you do? Cancel out one of the R's. Now, I've got to find the velocity of the moon as it orbits around the Earth. How do you find the velocity of a spinning object going around the Earth? What two things do you need? Circumference and? for an object spinning around. All I want to know is how fast it's moving. You all have done this countless times. Think back to the rubber stopper lamp. How did you calculate the velocity of the rubber stopper going around your head? Mass what did you do? No! Mass is not a factor. Isn't it four pi? No! All I want is the velocity. Big G? No! God! God. <laughs> Small G! Isn't it four pi? I'm going to walk around in a circle like this. I'm going to count. Okay? Oh, radius. To get? Circumference. Circumference. And then I'm going to divide that by? Time. I don't remember. Two pi r over t? Oh, yeah. All right, so. So can we put this in here for that? Holy crap. Yeah. That's some manipulation. Because you have to find the orbital velocity of the I thought that was mother. Now, so, that's one thing you can do. If you, you the other thing that you can do if you don't like this is this is flipping you out. If the moon makes one revolution around the earth, how many radians does it move through? Uh, two pi. Two pi. It's going to take 20 something days. So you can take two pi radians and divide it by the time it takes for the moon to orbit around in one second. Put that in for omega. If that's going to flip you out, do MR Squared separately, take 2 pi divided by 27 days, convert it into seconds. I don't care. You're going to get the same answer either way. Okay? Just figure out a way. But it's going to be a really big number. Okay, I'm done. I'm on your own. And 2 pi r divided by 2.